In this age of survivor shows, one stranded woman who battled the elements alone in the Arctic last century would have been a sure winner. In 1921, 23-year-old Ada Blackjack boarded a ship headed for a remote island north of Siberia. The diminutive Inupiat woman had reluctantly joined up as the cook and seamstress for an expedition of four men and, strangely, a cat named Victoria. Blackjack had been assured that during her one-year contract to sew survival gear on Wrangell Island, she would be well fed and cared for without needing to engage in the gruelling daily work of Arctic survival. But by the time a rescue ship appeared on the horizon nearly two years later, Blackjack was the only member of the team still alive, that is, apart from Victoria. Blackjack would come to be known as the female Robinson Crusoe. The shy tailor with a crippling fear of polar bears had possessed no survival skills at the start of the expedition. Blackjack, her married name, was born in 1898 in Spruce Creek, Alaska, an isolated community north of the Arctic Circle near the then depleted gold rush town of Nome. While Blackjack was Inupiat, she was not raised with any learning of hunting or wilderness survival. Having lost her father at age eight, she had been educated by Methodist missionaries who taught her enough English to study the Bible and instructed her in domestic skills of housekeeping, sewing and the cooking of European food. At the age of 16, Ada married Jack Blackjack a local dog sled driver, and together they had three children. Two of the infants died prior to Jack deserting Ada on the Seward Peninsula in 1921. The abandoned young woman walked 40 miles back to Nome with her five-year-old son Bennett, often carrying him when he was too tired to walk. Bennett suffered from tuberculosis and general poor health but Blackjack lacked the finances to provide proper care for him. Now divorced and destitute, she placed Bennett in a local orphanage, vowing that she would find some way to earn enough money to return him home to her. It was around this time that Blackjack heard talk of an expedition headed for Wrangell Island and seeking an Alaska native fur clothing seamstress who spoke English. The expedition was organised by a charismatic Arctic explorer named Wilhelma Stephenson and was to be later condemned as a poorly planned venture, if not a willfully negligent act of extreme arrogance. Using the pull of his fame as a seasoned explorer, Stephenson gathered a team of four scientific young men, Alan Crawford, Lorne Knight, Fred Mora and Milton Gall, with ages ranging from only 19 to 28. Stephenson's objective was to claim Wrangell Island for the British Empire, despite Britain never having shown any interest in owning it. Although Stephenson selected the team and funded the mission, he had no intention of joining the party himself. He then sent the woefully inexperienced group north with only six months of supplies and lame assurances of the abundant game in the Arctic which would augment their stores until a ship picked them up the following year. Blackjack felt many misgivings about setting out with an expedition of four men, especially given she had initially been promised she would be accompanied by many other Indigenous Alaskans in the party. But the odd jobs of sewing and housekeeping she was managing to find in Nome were never going to provide enough to bring Bennett home. The Wrangell Island expedition promised her a salary of $50 a month, an amount that was, to her, an unheard of sum. And so, even after several other hired Inuit people backed out, on September 9, 1921, Blackjack boarded the Silver Wave with the four-man crew and of course the ship's cat, Victoria. During their first year on Wrangell Island, the land provided sustenance as Stephenson had promised, 
but as summer came to an end, food sources shrank. The pack ice closed in, still with no sign of a ship. Unbeknown to the team, the ship named Teddy Bear, which had been chartered to pick them up, had been forced to turn back because of impenetrable ice. As the weather turned, the expedition was faced with the reality that their inadequate stores would need to last another year. By the beginning of 1923, their situation had turned dire. The group was starving, and Knight had become extremely ill with undiagnosed scurvy. On January 28, 1923, Crawford, Mora and Gal made the hard decision to leave Blackjack caring for the ailing Knight and set off on foot across the ice to Siberia to seek help. The three men were never seen again. For the next six months, Blackjack was alone tending to Knight. According to the Los Angeles Times in 1924, she served as doctor, nurse, companion, servant, huntswoman and woodsman all in one. She also copped the full brunt of the dying man's descent into madness due to the scurvy. He often screamed criticism of her for not taking better care of him. As Blackjack confided in her diary, she had taken over four men's work of building, hunting and maintaining the camp while caring for the seriously ill man. When night passed away, Blackjack recorded the event on Gal's typewriter and refused to fall into despair. She instead threw her energies into the task of surviving, still focused on being reunited with her son. Lacking the physical and emotional strength to bury Knight's corpse, she left him resting on his bed inside his sleeping bag and constructed a barricade of wooden boxes to protect his body from wild animals. Blackjack then moved her living space into the storage tent to escape the odour, hammering driftwood into the ground to support the tattered walls and ceiling of the tent. She built a cupboard from boxes which she positioned at the entrance where she stored her field glasses and ammunition and, most importantly, a gun rack above her bed so that she would be at the ready if polar bears ventured too close to the camp. Blackjack spent the next eight months alone simply surviving. Although she had never hunted or fished in her life, she was able to teach herself how to fire a gun, lay traps, repair the tents, identify native plants and ward off polar bears. She set traps to lure white foxes and shot birds, providing herself with food and clothing. She also built a platform above her shelter for spotting polar bears in the distance and crafted a skin boat from driftwood and stretched hides. The boat initially brought to the island by the team had been lost in a storm. She also learnt to operate the expedition's photography equipment, taking images of herself standing outside of camp. On August 20, 1923, nearly two years after first landing on Wrangell Island, the schooner Donaldson appeared on the horizon to finally rescue the tragically depleted team. However, by now, Blackjack was doing quite well on her own, having taught herself to shoot and trap to avoid the constant threat of starvation. She strode out to meet her rescuers in a magnificent reindeer parka she had stitched herself, her gaunt face bearing a jubilant smile. The Donaldson crew noted that Blackjack had, quote, mastered her environment so well that it seemed likely she could have lived there for another year, whilst also acknowledging that the isolation would have been a dreadful experience. Victoria the cat returned with her to Alaska, where Blackjack was eventually reunited with Bennett, now seven. She used the payment from her time on Wrangell Island, which was less than she had been pledged, to obtain treatment for his tuberculosis in a Seattle hospital. As news of the expedition's tragic end hit the headlines, Blackjack found herself at the centre of an onslaught of press attention, where she was portrayed as a hero and praised for her courage and resilience. 
However, the shy seamstress was wary of the attention and titles, insisting that she was merely a mother who had needed to get home to her son. She later remarried and had a second son, Billy, and the family returned to live in Alaska. Blackjack continued to resist attempts by Stephenson and her rescuer to exploit her story, but was also disadvantaged in the process. Apart from her expedition salary and some money she had earned for furs she trapped on Wrangell, Blackjack never benefited from her ordeal and received no recompense from the books that were written about her. While Stephenson and others profited from the story of the ill-fated expedition, Blackjack saw none of that money. Stephenson later even conducted a smear campaign against her character, with claims that she had callously refused to care for Lorne Knight. These claims were belied by Knight's gift of his treasured Bible to Black Jack, which she later tried to return to his family. Knight had often requested her to read the Bible to him during his illness. His family was so touched by her account and the care she had given Knight that they allowed Black Jack to keep the Bible, which she used up until her death in 1983. Although she is remembered by few, Ada Black Jack's inspiring story of strength and survival still earns her recognition as one of the bravest Arctic explorers in history.